Good evening. A man by the name of Frank Fenner died two weeks ago. He was 95 years old. Professor Fenner was at one time the chairman of a global commission, uh, the WHO. And 30 years ago this spring, he was the man who had the honor of announcing that smallpox had been eradicated from the planet. It was 25 years before that when Dr. Thomas Francis stood up at the University of Michigan to say that the Salk polio vaccine was safe, effective, and potent. And just to remind you of the impact of that, Voice of America reported that day that church bells were ringing across the country before he even left the podium. We've gotten very good at conquering most infectious diseases. None of you will suffer from polio or smallpox or likely measles or diphtheria. But the truth is, we haven't extended that kind of success to the problems of aging. You will know someone suffering from cancer, from Alzheimer's, from Parkinson's disease. And this is despite great advances in therapeutics. It's despite trillions in research underway around, uh, underway around the globe. And it's despite the brightest minds working in an entire 30-year-long biotech revolution. 10 years ago, our CSO, Aubrey de Grey, first suggested a, a slightly different revolution. His core idea was a damage repair model called SENS and a recognition of a simple problem. When medical science focuses upon disease, that is, when we wait for disease to develop, then what we learn is how to chase the pathology. And we haven't gotten very good at that. But if we look instead at the damage building up as a result of the normal metabolism of being alive, then we can learn to repair that damage before those deadly pathologies develop. That's it. That's all that SENS means. It's a model that steps away from the expensive and tangled pathology chase and focuses instead upon identifying, addressing, and removing the damage that is building up inside you, the damage that will eventually cause disease. And it's a simple statement, right? But a fairly complex task. For this revolution to succeed, we need to move this way of thinking into the mainstream of medicine we need to create an entirely new biotech industry. That's why we created the SENS Foundation, to be a credible catalyst for change, to be a public research and outreach organization devoted to the creation of a new field, rejuvenation biotechnology. The groundwork's been laid. Peter Thiel and other early supporters allowed a handful of visionary researchers to take the first steps in this field a few years ago. They're now being joined by an increasing number of individuals who believe in the foundation and its mission. And because of that, 2010 has been a pretty big year for us. We've expanded our research center in Mountain View. We've added new research programs. And we've added several new collaborating institutions. Our lysosomal research program especially has made great progress in addressing macular degeneration and heart disease. Our academic initiative is growing the next generation of researchers. And all of these activities are generating quality, peer-reviewed publications. Now, 2011 promises to be bigger still. We have everything in place for 10 further important projects. And if we're successful in fundraising, by mid-2011, we should be pursuing at least one research program in every currently recognized category of metabolic damage. What we're most proud of, though, that our projects are now capturing the imaginations of top-tier collaborators in biotech and regenerative medicine. Discussions are underway for a center of excellence at Cambridge University, and at last month's TED-Med conference in a joint statement with Wake Forest University, we announced a collaboration with their world-renowned Institute for Regenerative Medicine. And just before I came on stage, I was told that I could announce that one of the philanthropists that we invited tonight, Jason Hope, has offered a half million dollars to support those programs. <clears throat> yeah, Jason, you rock. We are attracting serious attention from the mainstream medical science community, and that's exactly what we're trying to achieve. A man by the name of Frank Fenner died two weeks ago. And he was only 95 years of age. Medicine hasn't eradicated a single major age-related disease yet. You can help the Sun Foundation change that. Thank you. <laughs>